Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about building a business versus having a job. Which one do you have? What are you looking to do? But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? So, there's a big thing that comes into play when it comes to having a business or starting a business. People who have always had a job going into business, things are now different, and it's a whole different way to look at it. And that's the question that I want to ask you now, today, is are you focused on your job or your business? And there's like a drastic, drastic difference. And one of the things that's really, really hard for people to kind of connect with in this, if you're new in in business, you're having the hardest problem because you haven't really dove in yet. But if you've been doing this for a while, there is a tricky thing that you get bored with the long term and you start focused on the short term. And the short term is a job, long term is a business. Those are kind of like the simple sides to this. And that's why I ask which one you have, because either are right. Don't get me wrong. You can do this however you want. That's the cool thing about business. But if you're trying to create a business and you're trying to create a company, a thing of value, then you have to do certain things that you wouldn't with a job. Like Let's just be honest. In all of this, if you're starting this and you have an employee, the employee, if they get terminated or quit or whatever, they'll just find another job, right? Yeah, might suck for them, but whatever. They wash your hands, they're onto it. That's a job. But owning a business is a thing. If you lose your business, it really, really sucks. All your blood, sweat, tears, money, equity, everything that you've put into it goes away. You lose all that. In a job, you don't lose anything other than like a you know a couple hours of sleep maybe and you find another job. So tricky part to all of that is how do you play the roles, right? How do you create that business versus a job? That's what we're talking about today. And I got to start with the most important thing that people forget. And I have to say, when there are new people, especially this new generation of window cleaners that have popped up this last year, the, the hardest thing for people to understand is the momentum concept right? You know, I love analogies and most of them are dumb, but here's, here's one for you. And I've used it before, but your, your truck breaks down, you're on the side of the road and you need to push it off the road. The hardest part of that whole process is getting the truck to move that first bit, right? But as long as you're on flat ground, there's momentum. As soon as the truck starts moving, everything's moving. You don't have to put so much effort into it. It kind of runs itself a little bit you still have to keep pushing something behind it to keep it going you can get it to even go faster by putting more behind it but it's not as hard it's not as hard momentum in business is the tricky part for people to understand because they're so used to jobs they don't have to have momentum they can plant long uh, well this is i'm doing this job now but in like three or five years i want to do this well that's That's not momentum, that's just decisions and goals and dreams and everything else. But the momentum part is hard. Everybody wants something absolutely right now. And especially in the age that we are right now, you can ask any question to your computer, phone, Alexa, whatever, and you'll get an answer instantly. So the downside with creating something is you want something now, and I get that. This is where the concept of door knocking comes in, which I absolutely hate door knocking. Most, most, almost all window cleaning companies hate door knocking. There's a few of the newer people that do actual residential door knocking that like it for some reason, but um, that's the now, right? People go, well, hey, I'm going to knock doors. What should I do? Well, first off, don't. But if you're still going to knock doors, then you have to understand that you're going out there to get a job. You're going to make some money right now. Yeah, but I made a thousand dollars. I sold a thousand dollars today. Okay, cool. You're gonna go do that work maybe tomorrow, but 
but then you're just going to go out and do it again because you don't have momentum in a company. You just door knocked people and they're like, okay, cool. Some guy just showed up. Like door knocking is a one-time thing. Roofs, solar, perfect, right? By the way, angry emails, send them over, I know. But with all that being said, the momentum of business is different than having a job. You have to continue to put fire behind this thing and do all of those pieces to get there. And you have to understand the long term. Understand it's going to be easier year two. It's going to be easier year five. It's going to be easier year 10 if you keep the momentum up. And momentum is this, SEO. SEO is absolutely the most important thing you can do for your company. It is a year round all the time thing. You have to have a company do that. You have to hire a company that knows what they're doing and they do amazing work. You have to. There's too much garbage out there. There's too many companies out there who will put you on the first page of Google and they're absolute trash. And they're just hoping that over time with enough exposure, you start to rank a little bit and then it shows like they did something and they didn't. I told you before I've used a bunch of companies. There were companies even in this industry that were screwing people. I mean, there are a lot more bad companies than good companies. That's why weekly somebody asked me about just a monk SEO, the one that I always talk about, but it's because I use them. I've used like four bad companies. I use them and it was phenomenal. The experience was great. The, the results were blowing me away. Just awesome. There's a difference between good and bad, right? But that's a long-term play. Now going into winter, people are, the, they're, they're making calls and they're, they're pausing their SEO or they are changing that long-term play for the now, and it makes no sense. Now, you shouldn't advertise when you're slow. We know that, right? Middle of January, you can't advertise. No matter what the special is, you're not going to get a a good ROI. But SEO is what keeps you ranking for the rest of the year. If you stop it, you drop back down. By the time you start back up in spring, you have to get all the way back to where you were when you stopped it. And by that time, it's fall, and you're going to cancel again. You never get anywhere. Momentum in business is not like anything else. You have to have the momentum because the more you put behind it, the faster you go, the more you can go. And I'll tell you, if you're not going to have employees, that's cool. But if you're only going to be an owner operator and you're doing everything yourself, a big piece to that puzzle and the headaches of it is that it has to be stronger. You can make more by doing less, by having stronger pricing or stronger accounts or whatever. That's still momentum. You don't get, even if you're by yourself, you don't get to the point where you have a full schedule all year round, year one. You don't. There's lots of pieces to that. Momentum is time. Time is the hardest part for people to wrap their head around. A company has been doing it for 10 years, 10 years right. It will always be bigger than a company that's doing it for one year and one year doing it right. Heck, a 10-year company that's not quite doing it right is going to be bigger than a one-year company that's doing it incredibly right. It's just momentum. It's time how much things can be done, right? Building a brand on that side of it is another piece that you don't do in a job. If I work for a company, I want you to know who I am, especially if I'm trying to impress a boss, but that's it. I don't have a brand. You have a brand. You have to do amazing work with a great experience. You have to do all of those things so that people know your brand. You have to have clear, amazing logos, not clip out garbage right? Vehicles wrapped, uniformed. You have to look the part because you're building the brand. If you're not building a brand, you have a job. If you're not worried about the brand or what you're creating, you're just worried about getting some work now. And then as soon as you do that work, then you have to go out and find more work. That's a job. You show up to a job and every day they tell you you have these things to do. So when you go home at five, Yeah, cool, all right. You know when you come back in at nine, they'll tell you what to do. In a brand or building this company, the brand is the strong part. I want everybody to know who I am. I want everybody to know my company, know what we do, and when people talk about it, they go, oh, I've heard of those guys. That's a brand. You'll never be a McDonald's. Everybody will not know who you are. Window cleaning is your world because you're in it. Window cleaning is my world because I do podcasts and I own magazines and I do sales and talk to companies and everything else. It's our world. I'm in it. But it's such a small piece. 
McDonald's can touch everybody in any situation and at any age. A window cleaning company only touches the people who are in the market for the luxury service that is window cleaning, right? But anything you do, it's worth doing right. And when you're building a brand, your focus is to build up your brand so that you specifically have a brand, a, 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 a backing of what your company is. This doesn't happen in a job. Sometimes people miss that. Sometimes, and this may be you, right? Take the blinders off and take a look. Maybe your logo is garbage. Maybe you made the logo and it looks just not real. It doesn't look professional. Look at any brand that's a real big brand, multi-million dollar brand of anything. Look at their logo. Look at their image. Look at their everything. Are you following that? Because if not, it's time to change that and focus on the brand. I don't know how many times there's some, you know, clip art type logo of just really bad, you know, here's a, a picture of a, a clip art house with a clip art squeegee and a name. And it's like, why are you doing that? Build a real logo. It's so easy to do. I mean, you could literally go to canva.com and make a logo. It's not a ploy for them, but anyway. Right? Creating a brand allows you to build a business, create the momentum, and get people to not only already preconceive notion of your company, but also understand what you do, what you represent, and the experience they're going to get. That's building a brand. Building a brand pairs with reviews. It pairs with referrals. Now, referrals will, should be, your 50% of your work should come in from referrals. People, you know, telling somebody else to come to you. That's free. If I tell my friend, I think this company's great, because they trust me, they trust my advice, and now they trust you. A referral is amazing. The thing with a referral is you have to ask for them. You have to create something so absolutely amazing they want to, to sing your praises. They want to be your cheerleader. They want to be your fan. So building a business creates that. Referrals need to be increased. You can ask. Referral cards don't really work. I mean, you can always throw something as an extra, but like a referral punch card type, like it's, People are not going to be out there. They don't know as many people as you think. It's like, hey, for every 10 referrals, you get a free cleaning. Then they're not going to give your information to 10 people. Very, very seldom, right? But you want them to tell everybody. When the situation arises, they need to be ready with that. Plastic gift cards, that type of thing, right? The same thing with reviews. Reviews, even because they don't know them, if you have a 1,000 reviews... People will say yes. WCR, we have 4,000 five-star reviews. We just hit 4,000 like two days ago. 4,000 reviews. 4,000 window cleaning companies took it out of their time to give us a five-star review. That right there, if you've never heard of us, and you've never bought supplies from us, because so many people are talking about us, because we have 4,000 five-star reviews, 4,000 other window cleaning companies, you have to assume that we do something right. We create a great experience, we have great staff, we are fast shipping, all those things to create that. 4,000, that's not 4,000 mom, dad, grandma, aunts, fake reviews, right? If you have four reviews, I'm not gonna believe it because that's like your family, right? But because there's so many, you create trust in mass and because the masses trust you, people trust you. It's the same reason that that media does what they do. You know, how many fake things are out there that people believe because they've just seen a lot of people talk about it. And they're like, well, it must be true of everybody. That's how things go. That's how, you know, I don't even, I won't even get into politics, but that's how politics works. It's everything else. The more people like one thing, you follow a herd. Even if you think you don't. You still trust because so many people trust that. Well, 4,000 people can't be wrong, right? That's referrals and reviews. Referrals and reviews are building a brand and then allowing that to get momentum by giving those referrals and reviews. Now, if you're going to get 100 reviews, that doesn't happen the first month. 
you have to really be on it, like nice job, or even if you're doing it yourself, like you have to be on it to get that. Now it takes time, that's where momentum comes in. Now you have 100 reviews, now people are just calling you, you're ranking higher, you're all of that because of the reviews. Reviews help push all of that to the level that you wanna be, the trust, the momentum, the business, right? If I have a job, I don't care about reviews. If you don't care about reviews, and you're like, oh, I, got a, I, got, I got like 20 of them, it's cool. It's nice, I wish I had more. That's a job, bro. Like, you have to focus on that. That's your momentum. If you've been doing this for any amount of time and you're not focused on reviews, then you've missed all of those minutes and hours and days and months, maybe years, to get those ones back. Reviews are so absolutely important. Reviews are up there with SEO, I think. Reviews are always gonna be out there. They're always there unless you lose your Google page or whatever, get reviews everywhere you can. I mean, you can even get reviews on Facebook. You can, I get reviews on the podcast. Not a lot, unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, I mean, reviews in a service industry makes so much more sense. Reviews and referrals create the momentum that helps your brand go forward, right? And I have to jump off, you know, I'm not even gonna say it cheesily, but uh, today I have to do a shameless plug and it's me. This podcast is always brought to you by me, Jersey. But I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. Um, it's what I do and uh, man, so many of you let me put your orders in. It's absolutely amazing, it really, really is. I. Genuinely appreciate it. I really do this stuff to help people and just, even I'm just some dummy, right? But if I can give anything and I've helped anybody, that's really my ultimate goal, truly. Um, it's really, really nice when somebody goes out of their way and it's like when somebody reviews you. You've done great work, they tipped you, they paid you, and they've gone out of their way to do that. That's kind of where using me as a rep is. It's like a lot of you are buying on your own. Um, and I want to be the guy who puts it in, cost you nothing extra, but I get credit for it and it's it's like I did something right. So I appreciate it, I just wanna say that genuinely from the bottom of my heart, thank you for letting me put your orders in and, and I want all of you. So if you're listening at all, please, please save my number, search it. If you don't, if you're just listening, but it's 862-312-2026, that's my cell phone. A $50 order, a $50,000 order, it does not matter. Uh, all of them are awesome and it all makes me be able to live. So thank you for that. Also, you're a nerd, uh, a window cleaning nerd. I'm a window cleaning nerd. We are absolutely indulging ourselves in the industry. So go to the American Window Cleaner Magazine website. It's awcmag.com and get a subscription to a paper magazine that is shipped to your door every single month a normal magazine subscription like you heard about from back in the days. Comes with sticker sheets, custom stickers, and uh, it's absolutely amazing. It's got amazing articles, it's got you know product reviews, and it's just really cool. Another form of media um, that I own, and you know, again, it helps me, but it also helps the industry to be able to put out something like this. Um, I would love nothing more than to have enough subscribers that there aren't advertisers in the magazine. Uh, but we limit that, so um, please go do that too. It's awcmag.com, get a subscription there. And uh, as the last piece to the shameless plug is, I have a YouTube channel of my own. It's jersey underscore nation. Go follow that, subscribe, it costs you nothing extra. It's like a little, you know, awesome click, high five. Uh, I'm trying to build that up and it is slow going, so. Um, I would really appreciate that. You know, the algorithm likes when you have more subs and likes and comments and all that stuff. And by the way, a lot of you just comment on all my videos on my personal page, which is amazing because that like ranks it even better. So thank you. That's all I'm trying to get to. All right, back to <laughs> back to the uh, building a business. But um, another piece to building a business versus having a job that people will always forget is there has to be an experience created to enjoy or repeat something. So advertising is what gets somebody to try you and the experience 
is what gets people to use you again. Now, we talked about this in the beginning, but if you have a job, you're just worried about that person one time. Hey, give me your money. Let me do the work. Cool. Okay, not on the next one. I got to go find another one. That's a job. You just, you did a job. You're trying to find another one, right? That is where you're worried. Your marketing hit. They found you. They called you. They whatever. But you didn't create an awesome enough experience for them to remember you. You didn't get them in to repeat. You didn't get them in to refer you. You didn't get them in to review you. If you're just out there doing jobs and you're like, man, I'm just trying to find more customers. Where do I get more customers? Where do I get more customers? And you're missing the fact that you have customers. That is absolutely a big issue. It is more than likely because you have not created an amazing experience start to finish for them to be in love with you. The tricky thing that people understand, and this is the, the, the I die on this hill type thing, we talk about it all the time. People think that, oh, just do good work and they'll call you. Well, what's your USP? Well, we're really nice. We do a great work. No, so does everybody. That's not USP. USP is unique. You're, that's not unique that you're nice. Everybody's nice in their heads. The experience is the start to finish process. It's the feeling you've created. It's the feeling the brand invokes. It's all of that to create the experience. The experience has to be amazing for somebody to want the experience again. If you go to a, uh, a, a movie theater, let's say you go to a Walmart, because I very much dislike Walmarts. You go to a Walmart, and the Walmart is clean. People are genuinely nice. There's not stuff on the floor. It looks like they actually have a cleaning crew. People are super helpful. They know what they're talking about. There's cashiers. You'll go there again. Oh, great. That was nice. I like that Walmart. That's my favorite Walmart. You go to some of them, you're like, oh my gosh, this is a train wreck. This is like a dumpster fire, right? Stuff on the floor. There's just carts in the middle of everything, like restocking and plastic and boxes all over. No one knows of anything. No one's giving you the time of day. All the employees are on their phone. Like if it's a bad experience, you don't want to go there. You're going to go tell everybody about the bad experience and it's not going to make you want to go again. Creating the experience in what you do is why people will reuse you. And that is the absolute most important thing when you're talking about momentum and a business. It is only a business if you have repeat people. One-time things, you just have a job. You're just doing a couple jobs, right? big piece to the experience is, and I talk about Apple because I really, they are one of the top people when it go, comes to experience. Think about that their phones continue to get more expensive, absurdly expensive. It's like thousand plus dollars now for a little stinking phone that sits in your pocket. Yeah, it's a computer, I get it. And every time a new phone comes out, Barely anything changes. Well, the screen is 0 0.007 inches wider and the resolution has three more pixels. Like, it's absolutely the same phone. On paper, maybe they could come up with something because they have to, but it's the same phone. But yet people still wait in line. They still go, I need a new phone. They'll have a computer for five years and they get a new phone every two. If you're in the Apple world, their products, all of them, invoke an experience of purchase. When you buy something, you unwrap everything is covered in plastic. It's all that static plastic, so it pulls right off. There's no adhesive, it doesn't frustrate you. There is no need for an item that is in a package, in a box, for it to be covered on the back of a computer with plastic. The only reason is because when you get it, it takes you 20 minutes to unwrap the thing. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. No adhesive. Think about that. They're like staticky cling things with tabs. Everything is incredibly easy. 
Think about the package where the wire is. There's no nothing you have to cut. It just pops off, right? There's trays you pull up and something else is there. It's like another present. Understand that all of the package for anything Apple, computer, phone, whatever, is all based on the experience of opening it. It's the experience of purchase, which makes people want to purchase it again more frequently. Their boxes don't have seams. Look at the box. There's no edges. It's all smooth. It's like velvety. Like All of those things are completely intentional in the experience. What are you doing for your experience? Well, I'm really nice. Everyone is nice. That's like everyone is nice. Like That's not a thing. Your experience has to be different than the other guys. It has to be like, wow, I remember this experience. Think of this. Think about you get your windows done. Your appointment's for 9 o'clock right? You've not had this done. All of a sudden, two techs show up, uniformed, clean cut, trucks amazing, parked out there looking fantastic, clean. You open the door, somebody's at the front, super nice. Hey, Mrs. Jones, my name's Jersey with XYZ. It's great to finally meet you. We're here to start service. I'll give you a quick rundown of what we're going to do. Explain the service, right? And they say, and as a thank you for letting us, it's your first time here. I'm going to leave you with this. We brought you some Dunkin' Donuts. Um, just as a thank you, you know, here's a hot coffee from Dunkin' to go with those donuts. And we're going to go ahead and get started, let you be. And when we're all done, we'll come back up. And right, Imagine. Now, you go, well, I don't know about that. I, I'm not giving everybody donuts. I, I know that. I know that. But think about that process. You've just now taken something and blown somebody away with the experience. They're remembering that. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. These window guys showed up. Incredibly nice guys. Ah, so nice. He showed up. He had donuts and coffee for me before they started. Could you imagine that? Like, who does that? Like, that is the experience. Now you go do the service because they expect a service. They expect a clean window. They expect you to be tidy and done and respectful. You get all done. You're all set. You're absolutely amazing. The talk that you had, you know, you were friendly. You went above and beyond. You get all done. The entire process was amazing. How does everything look? Oh my gosh, it looks so amazing. It's so great. Okay, great. I'm so glad. I'm so appreciative that you let us come. Um, And uh, for your next appointment, did you want to wait, do that in three months, which will get you to mm, about... uh, middle of February, or did you want to do six months, which will get you into spring? Uh, Actually, let's wait six months. They're never happier than they are right then. We talk about the dentist clothes. This is it. This is the part. You've created this amazing experience. They can't imagine that anybody runs a company this way. It's amazing. The feeling, oh my gosh, look how clean the windows are. It's so great. So awesome. Of course I want this again. If you don't book their repeat service there, you lose your momentum. You lose all those reviews and referrals because they're using you so often you're fresh in their brain. You lose all of that and then call them when they're not as excited about the, the, the job. They're only as excited as they are right now because it just happened. They've been blown away. It's fresh. They're, oh, it's awesome. Call them in two weeks. How did everything look? Oh, it looks really good. Well, now they look. The windows are a little bit dirty. They forgot that they even got their windows done. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they think they're staying clean. Like, They're not where they are now. So why would you wait to book them again then? Like, this is a luxury service. You want them to be happy. They want to be happy. The repeat job is what creates a company. You have a company if 90% of your people you've ever done service for are on every six months. People are like, well, that's too much. Why? Why is that too too much? Is that because you're, again, telling us what the customers want? If it's too much, the customer would tell you that. It's not too much. They want to be happy. It's like having a professional detail your car. Could you? Would you be happy to get your car detailed every month? Yeah. Because how awesome is it when you get in your car and it's got that new car smell and it's clean and oh, it looks awesome. Thing is shiny again. 
Of course you'd want that every month. Now, if you put it in your budget to get it every month, fine. But if they get done with detailing your car and go, great. Just so you know, um, we'd like to get you in back again for three months from now. We'll set it up now so you don't miss that appointment. And we'll just keep up with it. It's always going to look amazing. <clears throat> That's it. Repeat is what makes everything work. And repeat is the last piece to the puzzle. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's when you've created an experience. Those people have tried you from the marketing or the referrals, right? Your company, you're so confident how awesome you are. That momentum is exact, exactly where it needs to be. You've built this brand for people to be blown away. Now repeat. You've just created a business. You've just changed your job. We're like, I don't know where I'm going to find people or get jobs or it's really tricky. You now are creating a business. And a business is just like an ATM. You could have money coming out of it all the time. If every one of your customers is every six months, after a year's time of doing the right things, you're going to have every customer that happened last year on every six months. Year one, you're already on set. You need another crew. I mean, this is the expansion, the growth, and the success of a business versus a job. And if you're in your mindset and you think you're still in a job, it's time to change that and go into business, right? There you go. I'm off my high horse. Maybe that was a kick in the pants that you needed. Maybe you didn't need a kick in the pants. If not, hey, thanks for hanging out either way. I'd still love to be your rep. I'd still love to put your orders in. Love, love, love when people let me do that. It's, it really just genuinely means a lot when somebody shoots me a text and it's like, hey, my, my card's good, man, throw it. Like, they thought of me like that makes everything worthwhile on my end. So I really just genuinely appreciate it. And I don't get to say it enough because if I said it all the time, it kind of gets blanketed. But I want to be a rep. And I appreciate everybody who uses me. And I would love to have you use me. And that came off wrong. But it's 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Save it. Text me. Jersey is my name. I'm the only Jersey you know. Go get the magazine awcmag.com uh, get that subscription follow me on youtube but more importantly until next week go out there and build a business don't just have a job and make sure to be epic